don't know. There's just something magical about having a story told to you through both words and images. And maybe that's just my inner child going back to all of my picture books. I just really like it. Hi guys, it's April and I have another review for you. And of course I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I will have the non-spoiler section up front followed by the spoiled film dump afterwards in case you don't want to spoil yourself. But of course, as always, feel free to stick around for as long as you want. I will not judge you, but I will also let you know that I did receive a copy of Goblin for a free and honest review. And Goblin is by Eric Grissom and Will Perkins. This is a story about a young goblin named Rigget. I think that's how you pronounce his name. That's how I'm choosing to pronounce his name. Whose parents are one day killed by a very, very evil human being. And he is dead set on revenge for his parents. Along the way of seeking out his revenge, he ends up with a few allies and of course learning a little bit about himself along the way. And it is just one of those coming of age stories, but from a goblin perspective, which I think is really, really fun. This sits in more of that middle grade realm, especially with the way the story is told and how the story is told. I have to say the artwork is beautifully done. The storyline feels a little choppy at times because this goblin does go through a very big journey, but it's only about 180 pages. And so in that, you do get development, but at the same time, you're almost left wanting just, just a little bit more because he does have so many little episodic adventures. And maybe part of the reason of why I enjoyed this book as much as I did was because of the fact that this goblin, this goblin has ears that just match a lot of the creatures in my life that I absolutely adore. So like I said, the artwork is wonderfully done. It is a very quick read. It does have a very personal inner perspective storytelling fable type vibe, which for the audience that it's geared for, I think makes sense. Like I mentioned before, I think the only thing that I really truly miss in this story is the fact that a lot of his adventures are so condensed and so shortened and they happen so quickly. I feel sometimes like I, I miss something or there is something that could have been done to kind of fill out a lot of the development just a touch more. Heck, I wouldn't be mad if there was like 200 more pages in this book, making this a 400 page graphic novel. But I understand that's that's a lot of work and that's not everybody's cup of tea. I just, fantasy gives you a realm to indulge, especially when you're in this graphic realm. I think that would have been so fun. It was a good story on its own. It didn't have a lot of its own elements. It did take a lot of those common journey tropes and a lot of those common storylines, but it was nice to see them kind of in this format. So I think this is a good book to pick up, especially if you have a younger reader who really likes this kind of fantasy style read, who likes graphic novels, this would be right up their alley. So this is the point in my review in which I'm going to jump into some of the spoiler sections. So if you don't want to spoil yourself, this is the point in which you, you can leave and come back and we can talk about it or you could just hang out and you can just hear all the things I'm going to say. Totally up to you. I have to say that while the storyline in this graphic novel isn't anything new or groundbreaking, I enjoyed the art style so much in this. I, I like how they did the color choices and what they did for character um, personas. There were a couple times where some of the perspective seemed a little off. Uh, the dog, the wolf, who is by far my favorite character in this, this whole story, Fish Breath, seemed to change size a little bit. And I get it at the end of the Ratfish novel because his journey somehow like transported him to several more years because time is a little wonky. And so 
fish breath has grown up a little bit. At least that's kind of what I'm assuming happened. But even at the very beginning when we first met him, there were some times where fish breath seemed bigger, but then smaller than Ricket. And it felt a little off that way, but I mean, it didn't, it didn't necessarily pull me out of the story. It was just one of those things that I'm like, oh, well, that's a little odd. I do feel like some of the stuff happened a little too quickly. I mean, you had this whole thing with the Minotaur who tried to keep him captured that I, I feel like we got out of way too quickly. The, I, I know the whole point of the beginning of the book is his father teaching him about the goblin ways of patience and cunningness. And those are some of the things that he learns on his journey for getting revenge. It just, it, it feels like it happened too cleanly. And I think part of it is because this, this is written for a younger audience and they probably wouldn't be as picky as I am. But I liked the characters so much that I wanted to get more in depth with them. I think that is my biggest thing. Overall, I, I enjoyed this read and I think this would be a great read to have for kids of all ages. And it's definitely something that would be fun to read with a child. I think that would be a, a great adventure, kind of a pre-introduction to sitting down and reading The Lord of the Rings to them or something like that. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I think it, it was fun. So tell me down below what your thoughts are on this graphic novel. I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe down below, hit that bell, get all of those notifications, and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.